Black theology, or Black liberation theology, refers to a theological perspective which originated in some black churches in the United States and later in other parts of the world, which contextualizes Christianity in an attempt to help those of African descent overcome oppression. It especially focuses on the injustices committed against African Americans and black South Africans during American segregation and apartheid, respectively. Black theology seeks to liberate people of color from multiple forms of political, social, economic, and religious subjugation and views Christian theology as a theology of liberation, a rational study of the being of God in the world in light of the existential situation of an oppressed community, relating the forces of liberation to the essence of the gospel, which is Jesus Christ, writes James Halcone, one of the original advocates of the perspective. Black theology mixes Christianity with questions of civil rights, particularly raised by the Black Power Movement and the Black Consciousness Movement. Modern American origins of contemporary Black theology can be traced to July 31, 1966, when an ad hoc group of 51 concerned clergy, calling themselves the National Committee of Negro Churchmen NCMC, bought a full-page ad in the New York Times to publish their Black Power statement, which proposed a more aggressive approach to combating racism using the Bible for inspiration. In American history, ideas of race and slavery were supported by many Christians from particular readings of the Bible. The Southern Baptist Convention supported slavery and slaveholders. It was not until June 20, 1995 that the formal Declaration of Repentance was adopted. This non-binding resolution declared that racism, in all its forms, is deplorable and lamented on a national scale and is also repudiated in history as an act of evil from which a continued bitter harvest unfortunately is reaped. The convention offered an apology for condoning and or perpetuating individual and systemic racism in our lifetime and repentance for racism of which many have been guilty, whether consciously or unconsciously. Christianity is associated with racism. Yet Christ, the forerunner of Christian behavior professed individuality and in living testimony is demonized for the pursuit of individually targeted sanctuary. Therefore, there must then be a dialogue regarding the implications of racism in today's society and to what extent historical, intellectual, social factors affect the plight of the black community. Cole relates that, once upon a time it was acceptable to lynch a black man by hanging him from the tree. But today's economics destroy him by crowding many into a ghetto and letting filth and despair created by themselves put final touch on a coveted death. Black theology deals primarily with the African-American community to make Christianity real for blacks. It explains Christianity as a matter of liberation here and now, rather than in an afterlife. The goal of black theology is not for special treatment. Instead, all black theologians are asking for is for freedom and justice. No more, and no less. In asking for this, the black theologians, turn to scripture as a sanction for their demand. The psalmist writes for instance, if God is going to see righteousness established in the land, he himself must be particularly active as the helper of the fatherless to deliver the needy when he crieth, and the poor that hath no helper. Black theology would eventually develop outside of the United States to the United Kingdom and parts of Africa, especially addressing apartheid in South Africa. Anthony Bradley of the Christian Post interprets that the language of economic parody and references to maldistribution as nothing more than channeling the views of Karl Marx. He believes James Cohn and Cornel West have worked to incorporate Marxist thought into the black church, forming an ethical framework predicated on a system of oppressor class versus a victim much like Marxism. Trinity United Church of Christ Chicago has been cited in the press and by Cohn as the best example of a church formally founded on the vision of black theology. The 2008 Jeremiah Wright controversy, over alleged racism and anti-Americanism in Wright's sermons and statements, caused then-Senator Barack Obama to distance himself from his former pastor. Stanley Kurtz of the National Review wrote about the perceived differences with conventional American Christianity. 
He quoted black theologian Obery M. Hendricks Jr., according to Hendricks, many good church-going folk have been deluded into behaving like modern-day Pharisees and Sadducees when they think they're really being good Christians. Unwittingly, Hendricks says, these apparent Christians have actually become like the false prophets of Baal. Kurtz also quotes the Reverend Jeremiah Wright, how do I tell my children about the African Jesus who is not the guy they see in the picture of the blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy in their Bible or the figment of white supremacist imagination that they see in Mel Gibson's movies?